Robson Connolly of Great Falls, Virginia, has had a long and varied career as a professional photographer. During his early years as a portrait and news photographer, he took pictures of famous people. After retiring from the Smithsonian in 1977, he devoted himself to nature and wildlife photography. Let's find out how it all began. My professional career began in 1933 when I went to work for the government printing office in Washington, D.C. For two years, I served as an apprentice. Then, after that, I became a journeyman photographer. When we entered the war, I signed up and joined the Navy, where I served as a chief aviation photographer. This Navy photograph shows a group of fellow photographers that served with me at the Naval Photo Center in Anacostia. After the war was over, I went to work for the Library of Congress, and then I went into business for myself for a couple of years. From there, I went to work for Harrison Ewing, a portrait and commercial studio in Washington. At Harrison Ewing, I had the privilege of photographing many notables. I regularly went to the White House and Congress covering various historical events. When I started with Harrison Ewing, Eisenhower was president. When Kennedy came in, I was there at the start of his administration. He was a very good subject for a photographer. Johnson was rather camera shy at first, but he mellowed and became easier to photograph. From Harrison Ewing, I went to Marymount College of Virginia, where I served as a public information officer, as well as a school photographer. After several years there, I joined the staff of the Smithsonian. It was there that I had the privilege of photographing such people as Emperor Hirohito. He was an authority on marine biology and visited Washington to pursue that interest. I retired from the Smithsonian in 77, and since then I have been doing nature photography. I started going to the west. The southwest areas particularly appealed to me, mostly California, Colorado, Utah, Arizona, and New Mexico. I look for desolate spots where there are very few people where I can be alone to see the pictures that I want to capture. The areas are just so beautiful in themselves. Just to be able to capture that beauty on film is really rewarding. And it's right here in our own country. I started to photograph wildflowers and I enjoyed that very much. The park at Great Falls has an abundance of wildflowers and quite a variety. I find I really enjoy myself just walking out through the woods. Almost every time I go there, I find something new. Kenilworth Gardens is a great place for waterflowers, and they have an abundance of wildflowers. Bull Run Park in Manassas is very good. Anywhere you get water washing down from the mountains, you find that you will see a lot of wildflowers. That's the way they spread. I use a spot meter that reads the subject matter, like a leaf or a flower, which is more important than reading the whole scene. With that, I'm so sure of myself that I don't need to bracket. I seldom take more than one picture of any scene. This goes back to the days as a professional photographer when we weren't allowed to waste film. If the customer wanted one picture, you used one piece of film. That's still my method today. Nature photography is much easier on the photographer. You don't have to worry about pleasing the customer. The birds and the animals don't worry about wrinkle lines and so forth. 
In the Everglades, there are plenty of alligators, but they don't exactly pose for you, so you have to take what you can get. You can get fairly close to the alligators because they're in no hurry. Generally, during the day, they're sunning themselves and they sleep. They yawn and that cools them down. With birds, you need long lenses. It's nearly impossible to photograph the birds closely and you have to be ready when you see something. You can go out and spend a whole day and not be satisfied with any of the photographs. I have shown my collection of photographs at the auditorium in Great Falls Park. It's a nice spot and it draws a variety of people. I have also exhibited at the National Wildlife Federation on Leesburg Pike. Their gallery is a beautiful setting for a display of photographs. I belong to the McLean Art Club and take part in their shows at the community center. Just before the Christmas holidays, I was invited to meet President Reagan. There in the Oval Office of the White House, I presented him with a pair of landscape photographs of Yosemite National Park. In the near future, I'd like to travel to Alaska, our last frontier. They tell me that the wilderness there is beautiful beyond words, and this would appeal to me very much.